Deputy Healy. Uh, thank you, Les Cahira. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome the Minister and uh, Mr O'Brien, the officials, uh, uh, to the meeting this, this afternoon. Uh, and I suppose the first thing we need uh, to establish and to accept is that accident emergency overcrowding is unacceptable in any circumstances. Uh, but of course, that's, that's only the beginning. Having accepted that, we have to take action to solve the problem and to permanently solve the problem. What we've been doing for years, what we've done in the last week, what we're doing again today is largely short-termism, largely firefighting uh, and little or no addressing the situation on a long-term basis to permanently solve the problem. Uh, and uh, in, in his uh, presentation, Mr O'Brien indicated the difficulty with reduced budgets over the last number of years. Of course, it's absolutely correct. Because when you take nearly €4 billion Euros out of a budget, when you uh, lose 11,000 staff, when you reduce 2,000 be beds out of the system, when you, re you reduce home health hours by about €2 million, when you uh, reduce the fair deal by about 50%, all those cuts over the years by this government and by previous governments simply devastates the system. And that is what has happened. And we now have a situation where staff at all levels uh, are working above and beyond the call of duty on a daily basis. And there is no capacity left in the system. In my own local hospital in South Tip generally, it's running at about 120% capacity every day of the week. And that's, that, that is the power for other hospitals uh, around the country as well. The system is under ferocious pressure, uh, and as I say, there is little or no capacity uh, left in it to deal with any surges or, or any additional uh, pressures. Uh, the Minister has said today, and he said oh, uh, quite a number of times now, that this is a long-standing problem, and it is absolutely a long-standing problem. It's a chronic problem going on for years. And it has been addressed by reports and investigations on numerous occasions. Uh, it was at one stage declared a, a national emergency, I remember. Uh, but the outcome of that is that we know the solution to this problem. You know, uh, we know the solution. Every manager in every hospital around this country knows the solution. Every clinician knows the solution. Every nurse knows the solution to the problem. Uh, and we simply have to address it now on a long-term, permanent basis to ensure that accident and emergency overcrowding, which is absolutely horrific, for patients uh, and for members of our families, uh, that that is stopped and solved once and for all. As I said, we know exactly uh, what, what needs to be done to do that. Uh, and I just very briefly say, you know, things like uh, the use of medical assessment units, uh, the use of discharge lounges, lounges, the use of rapid access to outpatient departments, uh, appointments, uh, all things that are in place in most hospitals now. Very worthwhile, absolutely essential, very helpful. But they will not solve the problem on their own. We need, we need other, uh, other um, uh, active, uh, actions that, have, that are out there for years and that we know will, will solve the problem for years. We need the community intervention teams. And I know that there is money in the budget and there's a proposal to extend those, Thank but not for, not for all the hospitals around the country. We need them for every uh, area where we have uh, an emergency department. We need the opening of the closed beds and we need additional step-down beds for, for patients. And we need to at least restore the fair deeds to the situation that we were in this time 12 months ago where it was at six weeks. We need to at least go back there. And we need additional staff, nursing, medical and support staff. Uh, to deal with the problems that we have. Unless those are, are, are put in place, we'll be dealing with this question next year and the year after and the year after that as Thank well. You, Deputy. Uh, and finally, yeah. last, uh, I'm sorry for delaying you, okay. uh, but finally I do want to just ask uh, uh, Mr O'Brien, uh, in relation to the final paragraph on page 8, 
uh, if he would, uh, if he would um, maybe uh, give us some more information in relation to that. It's suggesting there that there are two and a half uh, thousand long stay public beds uh, at risk uh, in the coming 12 months in relation to standards. And I'd like, just like to have some confirmation that those beds will be, that that matter will be dealt with, there'll be funding made available for it, and that they will continue to be in place. Thank you. Thank you. Um, on the pills and blankets, um, you know, look at hospitals don't need delegated sanction from the Director General of Health Service or Army to procure items such as that. Um, uh, it may be just the case that they were so overwhelmed that, that they just weren't uh, prepared at the time. Um, and, and I would hope it doesn't happen again, so, so they don't need to need to go off and procure extra pillows. It's, uh, I think we both agree that's not that's not the solution. Uh, um, the fair deal is under review. Um, I think Minister Lynch is due to receive the review of the fair deal in, in a matter of weeks. Um, uh, and uh, I, I, I suppose we'll deal with that when it, when it arrives, and I, I, know you'll, um, I, I know you'll want to. Um, people, uh, in terms of the HSC trolley car, uh, people on chairs are, are counted. Uh, anyone who's in the emergency department and a doctor says they need to be admitted uh, is counted. Um, uh, and that's, that's just as the doctor sounds are in the emergency department, the doctor says they need to be admitted and they're waiting on a bed, uh, they're counted. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter whether it's a chair or a trolley. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Pat Healy to comment on some of the aspects of social care delivery, but I should just first of all set the record straight for Deputy Healy's benefit. There has at no time ever been a 50% cut in Fair Deal. No, there's never been a cut of that kind with Pat. And so just, just to mean the situation currently, as you've said yourself, is 11 weeks. Mm. Now, I'm told it's higher than that, but let's take it as 11 weeks. Last year it was six weeks. Ah, but that's not as a result of a cut. That's as a result well, of an increase it's, in demand. It's still clogging up beds and hospitals. It is true. I agree with you completely, but it's not the case that the budget has ever been cut by that amount. Is that, yes. is that the reason? That is, yes. Mr Healy. Yeah. The vision at the moment is that um, with the initiative uh, in December, uh, there was already plans uh, as part of our escalation process to have 700 beds available. The additional, we got approval, as has been said, for the 3 million additional. So those 300 beds went in before Christmas and the waiting uh, time has been brought to 11 weeks, so it is currently 11 weeks, and it is continuing at that at present. Um, and uh, so, so that's an important part of that. And of course, there is demographic growth and there is uh, the, the waiting list at that, and the system works better when, as Deputy Healy says, when the waiting list is no more than four to six weeks, the system has worked significantly better. Important to say as well, I think, that uh, as part, again, of the escalation, the reference to 165 transitional care beds in addition to the Fair Deal scheme uh, were put in place in December. And uh, those had uh, an important contribution to make as well uh, to the um, uh, capacity to, to reduce the daily discharges overall uh, in the time, as, as set out in the Director General's um, opening statement. And since then, I think a really important part has been the focus on transitional care uh, over the past number of weeks. Uh, and we have worked closely with Nursing Home Ireland in relation to that. And, and I think that has to be acknowledged that they have worked well with us on that. And uh, we have identified 250 beds uh, from, from a survey we undertook uh, with the uh, Nursing Home Ireland. And we are targeting those. And you know, the, that's, that has contributed significantly to our capacity to respond. Uh, and the work that is underway now uh, with, between hospitals and the community services, particularly social care, is in matching uh, the capacity within the private nursing home sector uh, with the dependency of the uh, older people, particularly who, who are being discharged, and that is working well. And we've seen the the, the, the reductions um, of you know 192 have have actually been discharged in the in the past week. So I think that's important, and uh, it's an important part of it. And of course. Uh, the home care packages, it, it's important to, to confirm, I suppose, to the committee that uh, that has been available. Um, and uh, right throughout the December period, um, a significant focus was uh, deployed to ensure that home care packages uh, and home care services were provided. And particularly in the week uh, before Christmas, over 120 home care packages were provided, 87 of those uh, directly to the hospitals. And again, during the December period, um, uh, there was over 296, um, during, across the four weeks there, there was uh, over 296 home care packages delivered to the hospitals as part of that initiative, uh, and over 550 when you take the community and hospital together. So it is clear that 
uh, you know, the initiatives that was put in place about deploying, um, you know, getting the escalation between hospital community together, that has worked well right throughout December. Um, and of course, there will be uh, cases, individual cases, I think they're usually running about 20 uh, over a week, where a bit of work has to be done between the hospital community to make sure you get home, get the, uh, it, it can be that um, uh, the, the home care provider has to get the staff into place, it can be that you need uh, some modification of the house or that type of thing, but we're working very closely between hospital and community to ensure that that um, uh, is kept to a minimum. To return to the issue of the um nursing unit registration issue, which Deputy Healy asked me. Uh, what I was referring to was the fact that there has been a long stop date put in place by HICWA um, for compliance with the registration requirements. So interim registration was granted on the basis that uh, over time full compliance would have to be achieved. That date is mid-year. Uh, some of the stock that I'm referring to is actually original um, workhouse stock, both in terms of footprint and in the fabric of the external buildings. And the, the regulations are correct. It is appropriate that we move away from essentially ward-type accommodation to suit more suitable accommodation, single and double ensuite rooms and so on. Um, at present, uh, we're not in a position to do what would be necessary in order to meet the requirements of compliance by mid-year. But there are processes in place and underway designed to address that issue. But at present, we don't have that funding in place. Uh, that's, that's what I was referring, referring to there. In relation to the registration of nurses and or doctors returning from abroad, I think it may vary dependent upon whether the individuals uh, continue to pay a retention fee and where they didn't, the regulator uh, will be going through a process of verifying qualifications and so on. That's not something that we have a role in, but clearly it is important and we have seen recent instances that have emphasised the importance of the uh, that, that checking process uh, to ensure that people are registered only on the basis of their strict entitlement to be registered. Uh, and there can be variability depending on where people have been in the meantime, the availability of records and the ability of the individual to demonstrate their practice and uh, professional compliance uh, 